On May 1st, 2011, President Barack Obama appeared on national television with the spontaneous announcement that Osama bin Laden, the purported organizer of the tragic events of September 11th, 2001, was killed by military forces in Pakistan. Within moments, a media blitz ran across virtually all television networks in what could only be described as a grotesque, celebratory display, reflective of a level of emotional immaturity that borders on cultural psychosis. Depictions of people running through the streets of New York and Washington, chanting jingoistic American slogans, waving their flags like the members of some cult praising the death of another human being, reveals yet another layer of this sickness we call modern society. It is not the scope of this response to address the political usage of such an event or to illuminate the stage orchestration of how public perception was to be controlled by the mainstream media and the United States government. Rather, the point of this article is to express the gross rationality apparent and how our culture becomes so easily fixed and emotionally charged with respect to surface symbology rather than true root problems, solutions or rational considerations of circumstance. The first and most obvious point is that the death of Osama bin Laden means nothing when it comes to the problem of international terrorism. His death simply serves as a catharsis for a culture that has a neurotic fixation on revenge and retribution. The very fact that the government, which from a psychological standpoint has always served as a paternal figure for its citizens, reinforces the idea that murdering people is a solution to anything, should be enough for most of us to take pause and consider the quality of the values coming out of the zeitgeist itself. However, Beyond the emotional distortions and tragic, vindictive pattern of rewarding the continuation of human division and violence comes a more practical consideration regarding what the problem really is and the importance of that problem with respect to priority. The death of any human being is of an immeasurable consequence in society. It is never just the death of the individual, it is the death of relationships, companionships, support, and the integrity of familial and communal environments. The unnecessary death of 3,000 people on September 11, 2001 is no more or no less important than the deaths of those during the world wars via cancer and disease, accidents, or anything else. As a society, it is safe to say that we seek a world that strategically limits all such unnecessary consequences through social approaches that allow for the greatest safety our ingenuity can create. It is in this context that the neurotic obsession with the events of September 11, 2001 become gravely insulting and detrimental to progress. An environment has now been created where outrageous amounts of money, resources, and energy is spent seeking and destroying very small subcultures of human beings that pose ideological differences and act on those differences through violence. Yet in the United States alone, each year roughly 30,000 people die from automobile accidents, the majority of which could be stopped by very simple structural changes. That's 10 9-11s each year. Yet no one seems to pine over this epidemic. Likewise, over one million Americans die from heart disease and cancer annually, causes of which are now easily linked to environmental influences in the majority. Yet, regardless of the over 339 11s occurring each year in this context, the governmental budget allocations for research on these illnesses is only a small fraction of the money spent on anti-terrorism operations. Such a list could go on and on with regard to the perversion of priority when it comes to what it means to truly save and protect human life, and we hope there are many out there who can recognize the severe imbalance we have at hand with respect to our values. So coming back to the point of revenge and retribution, this response will conclude with a quote from Dr. Martin Luther King, likely the most brilliant intuitive mind when it came to conflict and the power of nonviolence. On September 15, 1963, a Birmingham, Alabama church was bombed, killing four small girls attending Sunday school. In a public address, Dr. King stated, What murdered these four girls? Look around. You will see that many people that you never thought about participated in this evil act. 
So tonight, all of us must leave here with a new determination to struggle. God has a job for us to do. Maybe our mission is to save the soul of America. We can't save the soul of this nation throwing bricks. We can't save the soul of this nation getting our ammunitions and going out shooting physical weapons. We must know that we have something much more powerful. Just take up the ammunition of love.